All right, another related rates example. This one is pretty challenging. It's a classic related rates example. It's one that you see in pretty much everybody's calculus class. It's the one about a right circular cone. Sometimes you flip the cone over and it's like a pile of gravel. Sometimes it's one of those paper cups that you see at a water cooler that you're filling up. Sometimes it's melted ice cream dripping out from the bottom of a cone. In this specific case, it's coffee. This is supposed to be like a coffee filter right here. And the filter takes on the shape of a right circular cone. And I wouldn't expect you to know the equation of the volume of a right circular cone. So that's something that I provide you with. The volume of a right circular cone is given by this equation right here. R represents the radius of the cone. In other words, the distance from the center to any of the edges. H represents the height of the cone. And capital V represents the volume. In other words, how much liquid you could fill this thing up with. What's going on in this problem is that coffee is dripping out of this cone, kind of from the bottom here. Sure, there's my coffee. I'm told that the height of the cone is nine, whatever my units are, inches I guess in this case, and the radius of the cone is three. So H and R in this diagram are nine and three respectively. The rate that I'm given right here, so the key word rate telling me this is gonna be some sort of derivative is equal to two, or more precisely two cubic inches per minute. What is this that's two cubic inches per minute? That's the rate at which coffee is dripping out. This is the rate of change of the volume. This is telling me that V prime is equal to negative two. Couple challenges here. Seeing that this represents the volume is not immediate. I mean, maybe the fact that the units are cubic inches would be your clue that this represents the volume. But I think the wording of this problem makes that a little bit challenging. The other comment is it's negative. Why is it negative? Because V represents the volume of the coffee in this cone and the coffee is dripping out. So if the coffee is coming out at a rate of two cubic inches per minute, and V represents the volume that's still inside here. Since the amount of coffee is decreasing, V prime is a negative number, negative two. What I'm asked is at what rate is the height of the coffee in the filter changing? So again, we got the keyword rate that's telling us that this is a derivative. Derivative of height is what we're interested in. H prime is gonna end up being our answer. When the height of the coffee in the filter is four inches. So at the moment when H is equal to four. So the height of the entire filter is nine, but what I'm interested in is the rate of change at the volume at this instant down here where H is equal to four. This might be kind of confusing because now you have two different H's floating around, like which one are you supposed to use? It'll turn out we don't really care about the height of the filter to begin with, nor the radius of the filter. The only reason this nine and this three are given is because what we're gonna need to know is the radius at this instant that we're interested in. So I don't know, maybe this is like R0 and this is H0 that are three and nine respectively, but the H that we care about is four and the R that we care about is whatever this length is right here. How can we figure out this length? Well, you could take advantage of similar triangles. If you can sort of take this two-dimensional view of this three-dimensional picture, the fact that this height nine is three times as big as this radius three means that this height four has to be three times as big as this radius right here. In other words, this radius has to be equal to four thirds. If you want H naught divided by R naught has to be the same as H divided by R because we have similar triangles. So nine over three has to be the same as four divided by this thing I don't know R. And so if you multiply the R up to the top over here, the three over here and the nine here, you get that R is equal to 12 ninths, in other words, four thirds. Anyways, the first challenge with this problem is there's lots of information given and some of it won't come directly into play. It's this H and this R that we're concerned with. The good news is we're given the equation that relates together V's, H's, and R's. So we don't have to try to come up with this. We're trying to figure out H prime, so maybe we take the derivative of both sides of this equation. On the left side, we have the derivative of the volume. On the right side, we have the derivative of one third pi R squared H. The derivative of V is fairly straightforward. It's just V prime. The derivative on the right will be a little bit more challenging. Maybe it'll help if you can recognize that one third and pi are just constants. So we can pull that one third and that pi out in front. And what we have left is to take the derivative of R squared H. The derivative of R squared H is not obvious at all. Uh, what you wanna see here is first we have a product rule. It's something R squared times something else H. So I have to take the derivative of the first thing, the R squared and then I multiply that by the H. Then I wanna to add to that the derivative of the second thing, the H, multiplied by the R squared. That produces two of these D over DT symbols, so there's two more derivatives I have to take. The derivative of R squared 
think chain rule. There's some function, the letter R, composed inside some other function, stuff being squared. I first take the derivative of the outer function by bringing the two down in front, leaving the inner function completely alone, subtracting one, so I get two times R to the one power, but then I'm not done, I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of R. We still have this H here that we're not taking the derivative of, and we have to add to that the derivative of the H, which is just H prime, times this R squared that we're not taking the derivative of. We're just about done with our calculus. The derivative of R is R prime, so inside these parentheses I get 2R R prime H plus H prime R squared. V prime equals 4 thirds, 2R R prime H plus H prime R squared. Wow, what a mess. Easy to get lost in what we're doing. Remember, the goal is to find H prime. H prime exists right here in this equation. So let's solve for this H prime. Maybe we multiply both sides by 3 fourths. So we have 2R R prime H plus H prime R squared is equal to 3 fourths of V prime. I want to get at this H prime, so let's subtract this term over to the other side. I got H prime R squared is equal to 3 fourths V prime minus 2R R prime H. Finally, to get this H prime all alone, just divide both sides by R squared. I got H prime equals 3 fourths V prime minus 2R R prime H divided by R squared. We finished up all the calculus up here. If we're lucky enough to know V prime, R, which shows up here and here, R prime and H, we're done. I think we know most of those things. V prime was given in the problem, right? V prime is equal to negative two. So we're good here. R, we have labeled in our picture. That's four thirds. So we're good here and we're good here. H, we have labeled in our picture. That's just equal to four. So we're good here as well. But what about R prime? Do we know R prime? Unfortunately, no, we don't. We don't know R prime. And that's gonna be kind of problematic. However, there is a solution that you shouldn't have thought to do had you not seen this video. The idea is H and R are related by this equation right here. The fact that the height of this entire filter is three times as big as the radius of this entire filter tells us that the height at this instant is three times as big as the radius of this instant. In other words, H divided by R is equal to three. So H is equal to three times R or put differently, R is equal to one third times H. Why is that useful? Well, what this allows me to do is come back over here to my equation and get rid of all the R's. There does not need to be R's in this equation at all because R is just equal to one third times H. So what I could have done is taken my equation V equals one third pi R squared H and replaced this R with one third H. What would that look like? I'd get V equals one third pi times one third H squared times H. In other words, V is equal to one third pi times one ninth H squared times H. In other words, V is equal to one twenty seventh pi, the one third times the one ninth times H to the third power. Instead of taking the derivative of both sides of this red equation, what I could have done is taken the derivative of both sides of this blue equation because this red equation and this blue equation are equivalent because R is always equal to one third H. So wait, why didn't you just do that from the start? Why'd you do all this work in red? Well, the idea was you might not have known to look for this relationship when you were originally given this formula right here. You probably wouldn't have realized that we can't just take the derivative of both sides of this equation until you get all the way down here and you're looking to plug in the various pieces. If the problem had stated what R prime were equal to, then it'd be totally fine to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. But because it does not, the easiest solution, I think, is to get the R's out of this equation so that when you take the derivative of both sides of the equation, you don't end up with any R primes. That's what we did over here. Now we have an equation that doesn't have any R's in it. So when we take the derivative of both sides, we're going to end up with the V prime over on this side. And we'll have an H and an H prime. Maybe, maybe you can kind of see where those are going to come into play over on this side. But V prime and H are both things that are stated in the problem. And H prime is what we're trying to figure out. So taking the derivative of both sides of this equation, as opposed to taking the derivative of both sides of this equation, will produce an output that we can use. For the derivative of the left side, maybe I don't even need to show my work there, it's just equal to V prime. For the derivative of the right side, the 1 27th pi is a constant, so I can pull that out in front of the derivative symbol. All that's left is to figure out the derivative of H cubed. 
Maybe since we just did something similar, you're comfortable with using the chain rule here. You bring the three down in front, you leave the h completely alone and subtract one from the exponent to get h squared. But then you're not done. You have to multiply that by the derivative of the h, which is h prime. Instead of thinking about v prime is four thirds times two r r prime h plus h prime r squared, we can think about v prime as 1 27th times 3h squared h prime. I can simplify this a little bit. 1 27th and the three cancel out to leave me with 1 9th h squared h prime. And since h prime is what I'm looking for, I can multiply both sides by nine and then divide both sides by h squared to get h prime is equal to 9v prime divided by h squared. I don't just want an expression that represents h prime. I wanna know h prime at this instant where the height of the coffee in the filter is four, when h equals four. So I take my equation here, I change all my h's into fours, I change my v primes, the rate of change of the volume, into negative twos. I get nine times negative two divided by four squared. In other words, negative 18 divided by 16. In other words, negative nine eighths. My units in this problem are inches, so I guess that's negative nine eighths inches per, I think it's minutes that we were talking about here. Yeah, two cubic inches per minute. Again, I'm not too worried about the units. If you could come up with negative nine eighths, I'd be very happy. Wait, negative nine eighths, that's kind of weird. Why is it negative? Because H represents the height of the coffee in here. And if the coffee is dripping out, the height is decreasing. So the height is four inches at this specific instant, but it's decreasing at a rate of negative nine eighths inches per minute. That's pretty challenging. I don't think it's at all reasonable for a student to have thought to do this stuff in blue. I just wanted to illustrate the point that these problems can get really tricky and sometimes the equation that you're given won't be the one you wanna take the derivative of both sides of. I can't really imagine a case in where I would expect a student to see that. So if I gave you a problem like this and I wanted you to solve it the way in blue, I'd write something as like a little hint. Hint one, the volume of a right circular cone is given by V equals one third pi R squared H. Hint two, since you aren't given R prime, rewrite the volume equation by finding a relationship between R and H and rewriting all the R's in terms of H's or I don't know, something like that. Anyways, that's the idea with this really challenging problem.